We were thinking about an interesting way to get back into Murdoch's past. We did an episode in season eight called Shipwreck, which was a little bit about how Murdoch came to be a detective. So we started thinking about an interesting way to bring a new character into the show and maybe someone who could bump against Murdoch here and there, and that turns out to be Winifred or Freddie Pink. William Murdoch from Nova Scotia. Yes, sir. Amish McTavish from Ontario. That's me, Mr. Collins. Where's Master Prince Edward Island? I'm here. You? You're, uh, Freddie Pink? Winifred, actually. I knew I would have stand a chance if I used my proper name. It's fun to be able to go back in time and find out what, you know, actually makes our, our hero tick and the things that shaped him and molded him. So uh, being able to revisit something like summer camp and the different things that happened there, it's a lot of fun. Look! Stay back. Stay back. What are you doing? Helping you get him out. You're not scared? There's nothing to fear from a dead sir. It's a very delicate balance, and you have to make sure that the story in the past not only makes sense as a story unto itself, but also has some resonance in the story in the present. I contacted the remaining participants of your trip back in 1875. And? Well, Seymour Bailey died from a heart condition two years ago. But Jacques Devereaux is still alive and living in Algonquin Park, your old stomping grounds. And it just so happens Edwin Clark is visiting him there now. Hmm. So Hamish is the only victim? Uh, not quite, sir. A Mr. Quinn Prue was shot and killed near Gravenhurst just a couple of months ago. And of course, on Murdoch Mysteries, we always have a mystery, and that's always the story in the present that has to take the main part of the episode. The best way I can describe that past segment that we're revisiting was that it was somewhat competitive. So you're talking about a bunch of scholars rammed together that were not necessarily friends or didn't necessarily get along and were from different socioeconomic backgrounds. So there is some tension there. Definitely playing this character for a second time, it gives me more familiar with the character. It also, I think, gives an audience a lot more familiar of what he was like when he was growing up and how he became what Murdoch is and who he is today. John Paul is, uh, is a great kid, and, and actually, we do look alike. If I look back at photos uh, of myself, uh, I do look <laughs> like that. Um, I, I had a little bit more red in my hair, though. The last time was my first time, and now it's my second time, so I think I've gotten the grips of how to act in this character and what I should be like. Oh, kid's a pro. He doesn't really need my help. I definitely try to get some personal traits and characters out of him, maybe to put on action while I'm on set. I think to some extent there's, there's a boy still in Grown Up Murdoch. Definitely, teens are different now and present days. First of all, there's n not many electronics, that's just general, but the wardrobe is a lot different. You're basically out here in 40 degrees wearing three sets of wool clothing and you may be dying a bit, but it's, you know, it's film business and I definitely think that's different. I don't know how they survived.